Welcome back. In this video will be our first introduction to creating and assigning 3D path in Synchro. And we will be creating a 3D path by drawing it in the model. So to do that, I'm going to close the baseline 3D view and then navigate to a part of the schedule where we have the excavation going on. I can spot that visually or I can spot that from the schedule. I just did that visually. So I'll right click, select assign to task and navigate to the schedule part of it. And here we see that there is no growth profile for the removal. Now, it would make more sense for us to use a growth profile when we're assigning a 3D path. This way we will see the path of the equipment. So as an exercise, pause the video now and try assigning a growth profile to whatever appearance profile is being used here. Welcome back, and hopefully you were able to do that. To do that, we simply select the task, go to task properties, under resources, select the excavation and notice that it's using remove. And then we can go to appearance profiles and go to remove and adjust that by adding a growth simulation. I'm going to use right to left. So now if you scrub through the focus time, it makes much more sense to place an excavator here that follows that path. So we'll do that now. I'm going to go file, import, 3D, and import the excavator, assign it to an equipment resource. So after I import that, I'll assign it to a new resource, which is an equipment resource and not build a tree. Then I'll place the equipment in its original position. So using control B, I can manipulate it so that it's over here. And finally, we will assign the piece of equipment using the equipment profile we created earlier or an appearance profile based on temporary to the task that use it. And now we will create our first 3D path. To do that, we'll go to the 3D ribbon and here you'll find all of the buttons you need for 3D path. You can create a path, modify a path. You can open the list of 3D path as well as create a 3D path from scratch over here. And also you can open the 3D path properties where you can expand these as needed and edit properties of the 3D path. And finally, you have the convert polylines button, which we'll cover in a later video, which will allow you to import CAD lines and convert them into 3D path. So let's start by using the create 3D path button. So if you have the equipment pre-selected and you click on that button, then you can create the path with the first point being the origin of the equipment. Now, in this case, we don't want that because then if we snap to a surface, the equipment will start at a different elevation than the second keyframe and the third keyframe. And we can easily fix that. However, since we can easily not have that problem, we're gonna deselect the equipment and simply click create 3D path with nothing selected. And then double click to create each point and then right click to finalize the path. Now, the reason why we need to double click to create each point is that so you can keep rotating the camera with a single click as you're creating the path. So I'll make sure I'm snapping to surfaces and that's when we see the green triangle pop up. When we see the blue line, it's snapping to a line and when we see the red dot, it's snapping to a dot. I'll double click my first point about here and then my second point here and then my third point here. Then right click to finalize the path and call this uh, P01 dash excavator. Once the 3D path is created, we'll notice that moving the focus time across the task doesn't really change anything. And that's because the path has not yet been assigned. So to do that, I'll click on the task, go to task properties, go to resources, click on the resource we want to animate. In this case, it's not the excavation, it's the excavator. And then same place, we usually choose the appearance profile. We can scroll down and choose the 3D path. And now we see that the equipment does follow the 3D path. However, it doesn't have the right alignment. We can change the alignment from center to Z max. And here we can see the equipment follow the 3D path. And in the next video, we'll work on adjusting that path 
but make sure you get up to this point before moving on to the next video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.